المعتدى وهي تدور حول العلاقات Now begin the sessions which is about the economic relations between the Gulf states and Turkey. Exchange, economic exchange is useful for both sides and can be seen as a way of reinforcing peace and exchange of interests. The Turkish Gulf trade has been developed during the past 10 years by tenfold, and it is more than $16 billion worth. And investments during the past six years have increased 32 times to be reached two billion dollars and, uh, and this, uh, uh, we will have with us in this uh, session Mr. Mr. Khaled Mohammed Abdul Qadir Nur Al-Ghur who will be presenting on behalf of Saad Khunai as Sliman Atiqi and Ardal Tanas Qawa Dr. Khaled Shams Abdul Qadir is Dean of the College of Administration at the University of Qatar and in the past he was Head of the Department of Finance and Economy in the University of Qatar until 2013. He has obtained his Master's Degree in Economy from Melbourne University, USA in 1998 and his PhD from West Britain in 2003. His research interests are in several fields such as risk management banks, shares, Gulf currency and the labor market in the Gulf and he was at Pfizer research on different institutions such as the Amiri office at Qatar Central Bank and Rayyan Bank. Mr. Nur Lagur is an economic researcher who has obtained his, his master's degree from Marmara University in 2006 and 2008, and his PhD in 2012, and left Turkey in 2013. He works at the present time as a faculty at the University of Istanbul, the Department of Economy, and he has many research in Economy and CETA Center in Istanbul, and has many uh, researches that are uh, published uh, uh, Mr. Sleiman Atiqi is a PhD student in Oxford University and a researcher in Gulf State uh, countries and he is the head of the committee of the Oxford Forum for studies about the Gulf and the Arab Peninsula and the, the current chief of Gulf Affairs magazine. He used to be an analyst in the United Nations the Development Program and was in charge of the research program called Obstacles and Opportunities. And was in charge of the work of the program, obtained his master's degree in psychology, social and political psychology from Columbia University, and master's degree uh, specializing in international relations in Florida University. Finally, last but not least, is a uh, professor in Yandar uh, Al-Aisid, the University of Ankara, and teaches in different levels of university and obtained his master's degree from Connecticut University in USA and the PhD from New York University, focuses in his researches on economic development and economy of development and economy of uh, 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 energy and perspectives uh, in Turkey. He spent many years in the center of political and economic research in Ankara and has many researches uh, and has many uh, uh, the, uh, Changes in formation. The Kurdish region and the new variable Daesh and the role Turkey plays in the triangle of the EU, uh, Russia and Turkey. He heads the Energy Studies Unit and he contributes weekly 
to Yanis Shafak. We will start this session with Dr. Khaled Muhammad Shams Abdel Qadir. He will be speaking on the Turkish Qatari economic relations. I'll give each speaker 15 minutes, then we'll hold our general discussion. Dr. Khaled, the floor is yours. In the name of God, the most merciful, most compassionate, all praise be to Allah, Lord of the universe, and may His blessings be upon His Messenger. First of all, I would like to thank the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies for allowing us the opportunity. I thank the moderator of this session, and I welcome all our guests. So far as the topic, I was asked to uh, deliver my contribution on, which is to do with the Qatari-Turkish economic relations, present-day realities and future prospects. This is an important topic in the context of the current atmosphere of relations because the importance of these relations emanate from the fact that the economic uh, ties between Qatar and Turkey has become very important and uh, also Qatar's uh, position in the region as a result of this uh, distinguished form of relations with Turkey, although this may cause uh, some uh, argumentation, the nature of economic relations, they should either be harmonious with the political relations, as is the case sometimes. On other occasions, we see countries with strong economic ties, but when it comes to political ties, we see that they are less strong. Similarly to the situation between Gulf countries and China, for example, but so far as Qatar's relations with Turkey go, they, the economic ties and the political ties seem to be going hand in hand. If we take a deeper look, however, to this relationships, we will see that there are logical justifications for this and these are based on the economic interests and political interests. As you know, Turkey, from the day the AK Party came to power, Turkey, uh, we can notice that uh, Qatar's uh, uh, relations right from the start from the day the Amir, the father, came to power, Qatar's policy used to be focused on principles rather than interests. So if we talk about the political aspect of this, we will see that Qatar has earned Turkey's admiration somewhat because Qatar supported Turkey's move towards uh, uh, democratization and Qatar has always been like this from the days when the FIS won the elections in Algeria and uh, also when Hamas won elections in the Gaza Strip and the third move came when when the Muslim Brotherhood uh, won elections in Egypt, we are not uh, saying here that uh, Qatar aims in its foreign policy to support individuals of movements, but uh, principles by and large. Secondly, Qatar has uh, supported uh, our brothers in different countries when they suffered from injustices like for example Qatar strongly supported Gaza, Qatar strongly supported the South Lebanon strongly and also Qatar's 
moves in the political arena to bring closer together and play a role of mediation between disputing parties. These kind of roles, which were uh, supported by principles or principle-based, may have provided some sort of a convergence between Qatar's approach and the approach adopted by the AK Party in Turkey, which was also more inclined towards a principled point of view in its foreign policies. So this kind of political coverage was important to lead to the birth of the economic interests and the relations. As for the economic interests between the state of Qatar and Turkey, this was underpinned by two important pillars. First of all, Qatar sees Turkey as an important transition uh, country to produce its gas into Europe and also to, to take a good share of the internal market in Turkey. Similarly, Turkey wants to diversify its uh, uh, energy resources and Qatar is one of the largest countries in the world to export uh, um, gas and as for Turkey's other interests in, Turkey's other interests in Qatar we, here we have two important things Qatar is working towards the 2022 World Cup Finals and also to accomplish its national vision 2030 to diversify its economy and the Qatar needs a strategic partner in this. Hence came Turkey to play an important role in this regard. From all of this we in, uh, conclude that there are many points of convergence when it comes to economic ties. Additionally, there is another point if we want to uh, speak in terms of uh, the development of these economies, the economies of the two countries, the size of the economies. If we take it for granted that Qatar is a small country, whereas Turkey is a large country, Qatar's population is two and a half million at the most, whereas Turkey's population is 80 million. But uh, nonetheless, there is some sort of uh, uh, similarity in the size of the economy. Now, uh, Turkey's economy is, is $700 billion, and it's the number 18th in the world. The size of the Qatar economy is $190 billion or $200 billion, which is not that... Uh, uh, far away if we take into account the size of the country and the population. Qatar is ranked 49th in the world. With the kind of political uh, coverage provided for the economic aspect of the relations has led to uh, the business community in the both countries uh, striving together to consolidate the huge development of the economic uh, ties between the countries. In the 70s and 80s, the relations was relatively small and very limited. And even before the year 2000, which was an important juncture, the size of the trade exchange between the two countries was not more than 20 billion dollars. Compared to the current situation, when I last checked the numbers, the size of the economic exchange between Turkey and Qatar has gone beyond the 
1 billion dollars maybe Qatar has the largest share of this trade maybe half a billion dollars there are many things which are developed for example in the tourist side of things the number of tourists uh, in 2000 the number was 150 now it's 25,000 tourists going to Turkey from Qatar. As for uh, the diverse nature of the relations, we see now a lot of uh, Qatari investment in Turkey, and uh, Turkey is an important destination for uh, Qatari investment. The Qatar investment has reached uh, almost 20 billion dollars now and by this Qatar has become the biggest uh, investing country in Turkey and in comparison we see also Turkey plays a role in the renaissance of uh, Qatar and there are more than 50 Turkish companies present in, in Qatar and the size of the investments are more than 12 billion dollars now which are concentrated in the infrastructure for example the Hamad International Airport so big participation by Turkish companies many of the new road system layouts had Turkish companies participating in and other aspects of the infrastructure. We have more than 8,000 Turkish people working in Qatar in different economic sectors, and mainly in the construction and services sectors. As for Qatari-Turkish relations, uh, generally speaking, and the economic task Qatar is distinguishable from Turkey when it comes to its foreign trade and foreign investment. The investment is 20 billion dollars as we said, but uh, Qatar when it invests in Turkey it goes to global to other markets. It does not stop at Turkey only, but uh, in comparison, if there are any aspects of improving the economic relations from Turkey's side towards Qatar, this is focused in, in concentrated in Qatar and does not take a global dimension. But maybe there can be some sort of uh, mutual engagement or partnership in investing in petrol and gas or establishing the kind of industries that can benefit from Turkey's experience in diversifying the economy or expanding the export market for Qatar from, uh, for other goods other than petrol and gas. There are important uh, challenges awaiting the Qatari-Turkish relations, uh, however, which have some positive aspects, and these positive aspects uh, uh, pertain to the approach by the GCC to enhance the political ties with Turkey, which may lead into better economic relations with Turkey and the GCC countries. And of course, Qatar uh, has a precedence in this. If the general uh, GCC relations improve further with Turkey, then Qatar will have achieved the precedence in this regard because we in the Gulf now, uh, we are with the challenges that we face we are grouping together more and more and acting like a block and Qatar has become more in line with its, um, its policies rather than 
seeking a separate path from the rest of the GCC. As you know that the role of Turkey and the relationship between Turkey and the EU is still going through a difficult patch, especially when it comes to the lack of clarity and ambiguity in accepting Turkey's membership on the side of the EU, which is confusing uh, uh, Qatar's uh, outlook as to to what extent can it consider Turkey as a country of transit for Qatari gas into the rest of the European continent, although Qatar has played a role in supporting the justice and development government in Turkey, but at the same time, Russia came along and took a similar line of supporting of President Erdogan and the AK Party's government. This will place us in a different position, somewhat awkward. Maybe it will put Turkey in an awkward uh, situation. Maybe Turkey will feel more obliged to be nice towards Russia or maybe Russia will pressurize Turkey not to give uh, Qatar that kind of uh, opportunity to use uh, Turkey as a transitional uh, path for Qatari gas into Europe. And this may constitute some sort of a, an obstacle which will hinder developing relations between Qatar and Turkey. Finally, we want the Qatari-Turkish relations not to focus on the relations with the AK party only. We want it to go beyond in case changes happen in Turkey. We want uh, our approaches to be clearer, more uh, stable, and Thank you, Dr. Khalid, for this uh, review. The other uh, commercial relations are important, but also challenges. Now we go to the second paper, which is on the title of Qatar and Turkey, the future of strategic trade relations. Thank you so much. I would like to thank uh, organizers uh, to enable us uh, to share our ideas. So, uh, as we uh, all know, uh, the MENA region uh, is one of the most fragmented uh, region among the world uh, in terms of economic relations and the relationship between uh, economic relationship between Qatar and Turkey uh, is not an exception uh, so the total trade volume uh, between Qatar and uh, Turkey has reached uh, seven, uh, about 1 billion uh, US dollars in uh, 2016. Uh, this is below uh, two countries' potential, for sure. But when we compare uh, trade volume between 2002 and uh, 2016, uh, we can say that uh, there is an important development uh, between Qatar and uh, Turkey in terms of uh, economic relations. Uh, the main reason uh, is Turkey is uh, seeking its trade partners uh, after 2002. Uh, before 2002, uh, Turkey had mainly focused on uh, European countries uh, to trade, but uh, when uh, AK Party government uh, comes, uh, it wanted to diversify uh, its trading relations. So, uh, as a part of that, uh, Turkey and Qatar relations, relationship between uh, Turkey and Qatar uh, has improved. Uh, at 2002, total trade volume between these two countries was about 25 uh, million uh, American dollars. 
But as I said uh, today, uh, it has reached uh, one billion dollars. So it's a good development, uh, but it's still below uh, expectations and it's still below uh, two countries' potential. So the short term targets uh, will be to increase total trade volume to uh, two billion uh, dollars and the medium and the long term uh, target will be to increase total trade value to five billion uh, US dollar. And uh, when we take a look at the economic relations between Qatar and Turkey, uh, we can say that uh, this relationship is a win-win. It's based on a win-win game uh, rather than a zero-sum game. So this indicates that it will be more easy to develop uh, economic uh, relationship uh, further. So uh, Qatar mainly imports uh, from Turkey iron, steel, uh, electrical equipment, uh, furniture, uh, textile products, and food. Uh, on the other hand, as you uh, all know, uh, Turkey uh, mainly imports from uh, natural gas uh, from Qatar. And Qatar's economy is mostly dependent on uh, petrol, oil, and natural gas. But due to the fall in energy prices, Qatar seeks to diversify its economic base. On the other hand, due to the dependence on foreign energy resources, foreign dependency of, uh, on uh, foreign energy resources, and geopolitical risks, Turkey seeks to diversify its imported energy resources. So both countries uh, try to diversify, uh, both countries have diversification targets. And if these two countries can cooperate, uh, they can achieve these diversification, diversification targets uh, more easily. Uh, what they should do, uh, first of all, Turkey and Qatar should work more on long-term uh, natural gas agreements. So there are some steps uh, in this issue, but we have to work uh, more on this. Uh, at the same time, both countries can make joint investments in underground natural gas storage uh, plants. These underground natural uh, gas storage plants will be both beneficial for Turkey and Qatar as well. Uh, Turkish automotive spare parts manufacturers import aluminium from uh, Qatar, uh, and this means that Tur uh, Turkish and Qatari companies can make joint investments in aluminium and automotive industries. And also, uh, FDI investments between Qatar and uh, Turkey should focus more on uh, defense industry, agriculture, tourism, real estate, and banking. So there are huge potentials uh, in these industries. So uh, we will work more on attracting uh, foreign direct investments uh, in the region. But we know that Western countries are not so eager, Western companies are not so eager to transfer know-how and technology when they uh, make foreign direct investments. So when we are talking about foreign direct investments between Qatar and Turkey, we should set up our investment cooperation based on know-how and technology transfer. We cannot get, as I said, we cannot get know-how and technology transfer from Western uh, companies. So this means that foreign direct investments become a zero-sum game. In order to make foreign direct investments a win-win game, uh, Qatar and Turkey uh, should work on uh, know-how and technology transfer uh, regarding the foreign direct investments. And Qatar uh, is highly dependent on uh, imported agricultural products uh, and agricultural 
industry, agriculture, is a crucial sector in Turkey. But unfortunately, mostly due to the uh, lack of technological investments, Turkey cannot fully uh, use its agricultural capacity. So this means that Qatar can invest in promising agricultural areas and agricultural companies in Turkey. This will be beneficial for Turkey to increase its agricultural export, and at the same time, this will be beneficial for Qatar to reach agricultural products uh, with a more cheaper way. So agriculture uh, will be a strategic uh, industry, a strategic sector for both sides. And we know that Qatar wants to reform its health system to increase the quality of the health sector in Qatar. According to one uh, survey, according to the results of one survey, 43% of Qatari individuals would prefer to go abroad for serious health problems. So, and Turkey becomes one of the most promising uh, health tourism area in the world. So uh, Turkey can share its know-how on health system uh, with Qatar to improve the health system uh, in Qatar. So uh, health sector will be another uh, strategic uh, industry uh, for Turkey and Qatar. And Turkey uh, just as leveraged a sovereign wealth fund to generate long-term and low-cost finance for strategic large-scale investments uh, that can contribute development targets of Turkey. But Turkey is just taking baby steps on sovereign wealth fund, but we all know that Qatar is a mature country regarding sovereign wealth fund. So the Qatar Investment Authority has a good experience on this issue. So this means that Qatar can share its experiences on uh, sovereign wealth fund with Turkey. This will be beneficial uh, for Turkey. And lastly, both Turkey and Qatar aim to increase the share of Islamic finance in their financial system and to become global players in this field. So Turkey and Qatar can make strategic partnerships in Islamic finance. As I said, this is important to increase the share of Islamic finance, but also diversify, diversify the financial products that can contribute economic development process of both Turkey and uh, Qatar. So uh, in sum, uh, we can say that energy, agriculture, automotive industry, health uh, sector, and agricultural sector are among strategic sectors that Qatar and Turkey should cooperate to achieve diversification targets. Thank you. Shukran jazilan. Shukran jazilan, Dr. Nurallah Gour, ala al-tizam bil-waqt aydan. Uh, and thanks for respecting the time limit. Uh, as we saw, there is an opportunity to diversify the economy of Qatar uh, and satisfy the, the resources of Turkey. And there are different sectors that can benefit from this cooperation between the two countries. Now we have the third paper, which is about Turkey GCC relations, drivers, and limitations, presented by. Mr. Suleiman Thank you. I first of all would like to thank the Arabs. Um, my interest in uh, Turkey Gulf relations um, 
stemmed from the high-level strategic dialogue that uh, st was uh, initiated in 2008. And ever since, uh, and this is a, a very unique mechanism, it does not exist between the GCC as a council uh, with any other uh, country. So start, uh, so my uh, starting point on this topic uh, and interest goes back to look at how did this relationship develop historically? And um, uh, why was the, what were the, how did this relationship evolve? Um, and why was it not in place? So um, I will try and give a context, uh, focusing a little bit on the earlier economic cooperation uh, between Turkey and the Gulf states, uh, to give some context um, on how this relationship developed uh, into where it is today. Um, so it's noteworthy first to start that historically, Turkey and the Arab states in generally, more generally, have not really had a good relations uh, throughout the 20th century. Uh, starting, you know, this goes back way to the starting of the breakup of the Ottoman Empire, and there still remains um, some uh, misperceptions uh, uh, on what happened then, and uh, uh, this leaves a bitter taste even until today. You see it popularly when you speak to people. Uh, so in general, Arabs, of course, pointed to Turkey's Western orientation and uh, lack of interest in Middle East and Islamic affairs. Examples uh, include their involvement in NATO and uh, the pro-Western Baghdad Pact. Uh, in addition to uh, recognition and positive relations with Israel, becoming, of course, uh, the first Muslim-majority country to recognize Israel in 1949. So the Arabs were also uh, not uh, uh, pleased with uh, Turkey's uh, uh, involvement in the Algerian War of Independence, where they uh, voted or abstained against UN General Assembly resolutions that were in favor of Algeria. So between World War II and uh, the 1960s, Turkey was at its most pro-Western uh, period. So uh, what I think is uh, perhaps the earliest event we can actually point to in which Turkey and the Gulf states um, you know, started working a little bit closer together was uh, in 1973. The, this, uh, this starting point, I would place it uh, during the 1974 Cyprus uh, crisis. Of course, after the uh, Greeks supported the coup and Turkey invaded northern Cyprus, uh, this drew immense criticism from all over the world. Uh, including the suspension of NATO defense cooperation. And all of a sudden, Turkey found itself uh, isolated at the UN and in need of new friends. Uh, compounding this crisis was Turkey's financial hardships during the oil uh, crisis of that same year um, as a result of the 1973 October war and the ensuing oil embargo in which oil prices quadrupled. Um, so the confluence of Turkey's political and economic problems on the one hand and newly acquired wealth for the Gulf states, um, at this point, 1973, all independent, po pointed towards a need for closer cooperation. It is therefore no coincidence that in 1974, uh, Turkey signed a trade agreement, at first, uh, with Saudi Arabia that constituted the legal framework for cooperation and technical, uh, for uh, economic and technical cooperation. But however, at that point, uh, the, the two countries did not have uh, complementary uh, trade. Um, t Turkey at that point was not, not yet uh, export-oriented, but it did lay some foundations. Uh, the, the, so at the, econ the economic interactions at this stage were mostly politically motivated, I would say. In the same year, Turkey contributed to uh, the budget of the Organization of the Islamic Conference, and they also participated in that conference at a ministerial level. And they invited the Kypriot Turkish leader to participate um, in that conference, and there was a sympathetic joint communique. Uh, also, Turkey in, that, in 1975 ratified the, char the charter of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Previously, it did not do so, stating that it contravened its secular constitution. Um, so not surprisingly, Turkey also officially recognized the Palestinian Liberation Organization and provided capital for the Islamic Development Bank at, in that same year, becoming a full member in 1975 uh, of, the, um, of the bank. Uh, and uh, one can also note that the bank's Islamic Solidarity Fund consistently provided aid to the Turkish Kypriots since 1976. So um, these inter economic interactions uh, were very much politically motivated, uh, a prid pro quo like scenarios in the 1970s. In the 1980s, the Iranian Revolution represented 
a major crisis for Turkey in the early 80s. The year of the revolution witnessed a reduction of 8% uh, percent of the world's total output and a spike in oil prices by more than 100%. Percent. And Turkey was um, severely affected as it imported most of its oil from Iran. The domestic scene was characterized in Turkey by fuel shortages, high employment, and disruption in public services, which resulted in the 1980 coup. So the outbreak of the Iran-Iraq war was a, caused a relapse um, in the conditions, and this led to an emergency contract to import oil from Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. And the, in that same year, a $250 million loan was also agreed to during that year. Incidentally, more than half of the amount was delivered a day after Turkey had downgraded relations with Israel. Uh, that year, of course, Israel uh, was pa passed its Jerusalem law that declared the holy city as its capital. So it was very much Turkey susceptible to uh, pressures from uh, the Muslim world, especially the sensitive ones. And now, in the 1980s, owed to Turkey's export-driven uh, economic liberalization and reform agenda, they witnessed uh, an expansion of Turkish construction projects uh, towards the Gulf. By 1983, they amounted to $13 billion. And, uh, more than a tenfold increase uh, uh, from the previous decade. In the mid-1980s, trade agreements were extended to all the remaining Gulf Cooperation Council states. As a result, a large wave of Turkish immigrants uh, moved also to the Gulf. Uh, Saudi Arabia ha uh, hosted the second largest uh, population after West Germany. In the financial sector, we see Prime Minister uh, Ozal playing a role in introducing interest-free products and services with both Saudi capital and Kuwaiti capital uh, with the establishment of Al Baraka and Kuwait Turk uh, in uh, 84 and 89 respectively. So the 1980s ended with, uh, however, with Turkey tilting the trade balance in its favor with Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, mostly owed to the decline in oil prices. Uh, the early 1990s uh, took a, also a positive turn when Turkey participated um, um, in the liberation of Kuwait. Uh, they made notable measures, including the closure of the Iraqi pipelines and uh, stationing 135,000 troops along the border. And they also allowed the U.S. and the British to uh, launch attacks from the injured leak base. As a result of its stance, Gulf monarchies contributed $2.5 billion for Turkish Defense Fund. Uh, provided $2 billion worth of oil uh, from Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, and Turkish companies were allowed to play a prominent role in the reconstruction of Kuwait. Uh, however, even uh, with this positive turn, uh, they did, um, the relationship between Turkey and the Gulf states were not really able to take off uh, in any strategic depth. Uh, Turkey's military agreement with Israel in the mid-1990s really prevented, it was strongly objected by Arab countries, and they precluded any significant uh, relations. In fact, when the president of Turkey, uh, Demirel, made his first visit to the Gulf in 1997, he found himself having to defend this agreement at every press conference. And one need only look at what happened to Egypt uh, after Camp David to understand how sensitive this issue was. So, however, in, 19, in the 21st century, we see significant changes, both ideologically and geopolitically, uh, that move Turkey and the Gulf states uh, towards uh, much more strategic relationships. Uh, the, uh, old paradigm was no longer in play. Uh, on the ideological front, of course, the rise of the occupy-led government in 2002 with its commitment to neoliberal economics and the pan-Islamic outlook, Turkey prioritized its uh, improved relations with Arab countries and the Islamic world at large, the Gulf states, of course, being no exception, um, and this was noted. Uh, most of the baggage Turkey had, as far as Arab concerns were, were no longer applicable on all major points. For instance, closer ties between Turkey and the West. Uh, now you, you see closer tie Turkey-EU relations uh, not uh, based ideologically, uh, and the GCC actually welcomes this, and it uh, all c communicates this in the high-level strategic dialogue. Um, not on being not Islamic enough, uh, Turkey were very much involved today in Islamic affairs. The, uh, the Secretary General of the OIC between 2004 and 2014 was, of course, uh, a Turk. And uh, on the Arab-Israeli uh, um, uh, conflict, Turkey, of course, took a much harsher stance towards Israel, and this has been very popular with a lot of Arabs. But more importantly, on the geopolitical level, the removal of Iraq as a bulwark, countering Iranian influence in Arab affairs, uh, was a very crucial, um, um, uh, played a very important role in this, towards the shift. 
uh, the, the GCC uh, states were still, even though uh, they were at odds with Saddam Hussein, they still saw Iraq as an important linchpin of their containment strategy against Iran. And um, they actually opposed the U.S.-led invasion to a certain extent, especially at the beginning, maybe with the exception of Kuwait. And in the context of the Arab Spring, this has become even more pressing because Egypt was no, uh, the other strong country that was, um, um, that the Gulf states relied on to counter Iranian influence was a weak state. So the, conver the convergence of these factors made Turkey a natural successor as a strategic populist uh, Sunni partner in the region that could compensate for traditional regional bulwarks. So what do we see during this time period? Uh, what I uh, refer to in a recent paper as uh, institutionalized relations between 2003 and uh, uh, start, uh, between two th in this period. Uh, for, uh, this started in the landmark uh, cooperate, uh, economic cooperation framework agreement that was struck in 2005, uh, which laid the foundation for a series of agreements. Uh, chief among these were the reciprocal promotion and protection of investments agreement, uh, the avoidance of double taxation agreement, and also, but also uh, central banks of Gulf states and Turkey's banking regulation were also coordinating and struck a few uh, um, uh, MOUs which facilitated greater, greater investment. So a range of, uh, this, these provided the basis for sustained increases in trade between Turkey and GCC states. If you have a look at the economic and investment figures from 2003, uh, since the arrival of the akp led government uh, until today, the changes are very staggering. In 2002, right before AKP uh, government took over, the trade volume between Turkey and the Gulf states was at, uh, only $1.5 billion, and in 2014, it was $16 billion. Uh, and similarly, uh, if you look at uh, foreign direct investments, a mere $5 million in 2002, very negligible, and um, in, uh, compared to $1.9 billion in 2008. Uh, and this is very much facilitated by uh, certain, uh, an, institutionalized, an institutionalization of relations, especially on the economic front. I know Dr. Shamiri mentioned earlier uh, the lack of these, but I think these are, and I think he's right, but I think these are mostly on the political uh, level, but not on the economic level. Uh, to put in perspective, um, in 2012 and 13, uh, FDI amounted, from the Gulf states amounted to a tenth of Turkey's uh, inward uh, FDI coming from the Gulf states. And the culmination, of course, of these ties came in 2008 with the high-level strategic dialogue, which uh, I mentioned, and um, strategic uh, and specialized committees uh, um, included trade and investment, energy, tourism, agriculture, food security, economic, financial, and monetary issues. Uh, so, of course, I want to caution that the Arab Spring obviously brought to the fore some fault lines. It's not like it's one big rosy uh, picture between Turkey and the Gulf states. And uh, especially, I would say, uh, the UAE had uh, a lot of objections. We hear about the cancellation uh, of, the, uh, of an agreement, a $12 billion uh, plant, thermal pl power plant investment in Turkey that was canceled. But if you really uh, look at it, in fact, if, uh, and, and also the free trade agreement was, you know, was, uh, at least as some diplomats will say, is being held up by the UAE. But if you really look at it, the economic relations show, re show resilience. Uh, Turkey and the, EU are, 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 and the UAE are the major economic um, uh, trading partners, and the, uh, the UAE is the second highest in the Arab world after Iraq. 3% uh, thir of Turkey's exports go to the, EU, uh, to the UAE. So um, I would just conclude by saying, um, you know, there are also interesting emerging, se emerging sectors, especially in defense. Um, the Gulf states ranked among top 10 uh, export markets of Turkey's defense industry, and by 2012 represented 25% of its defense exports. And of course, Turkey um, has uh, numerous MOUs, most notably with Qatar, which I will not talk about because we had a brilliant uh, in-depth uh, discussion on that in the previous panel. Uh, I would just leave maybe with a final thought that, you know, over the past 10 years, we see the emergence of Turkey as a major regional power over the last decade, um, and uh, especially in the post-Arab Spring, people are starting to look at, you know, the Gulf as um, a major power in Arab affairs, especially in the absence of a strong Iraq, Syria, and Egypt. So one may refer to it as, you know, somewhat of a Gulf moment in, in the Arab world. So what I wonder is whether the next 10 years we will start to witness a GCC Turkish Gulf, uh, moment in history or whether current levels are the zenith of this relationship. And I 
uh, look forward to hearing uh, your views on this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Atiki. As we saw, different agreements that can reshape the strategic aspects of the relations between Turkey and the GCC and push them forward, but there is still a need to bypass some political and historic obstacles. Now we will speak of the a role of energy, Dr. Erdal Tanas Karagul. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, before my speech, I really thanks to Arab Center for this uh, invitation and for these events. And uh, my second visit, uh, let's say, to Qatar. I came the fir my first time was uh, in May in this year. In, this means that in uh, six, six months, I came twice in this country. And uh, I like this country because we need to come this uh, country or come this uh, region. And the issue of the energy supply security has uh, become a concept closely associated with uh, economy, foreign policy, and uh, global stability. It's the fact that there is a growing interdependence in the energy field, and this phenomenon boosts the importance of the energy relation among the countries and, and region as well. Turkey is an energy-dependent country. Turkey uh, imports 70% of the energy from the outside, but Turkey is geographically located in close proximity to more than 70 of the world-proven oil and gas reserves. Turkey neighbors important energy suppliers, countries such as Russia, Iran, Azerbaijan, Iraq, and uh, the other uh, Eastern Mediterranean countries. And Turkey also neighbors important energy buyers, like countries in Europe continent, and this strategic location provides crucial or important advantage to the Turkey. Turkey is viewed as a natural co corridor between newly emerging energy sources and energy-hungry and industrialized Western economies, sharing borders with the many of the oil-rich countries and being in the same neighborhood with so many other natural giants Turkey is trying to develop an energy policy customized for its needs. With, with the energy-hungry West on one side and the energy-rich East on the other, Turkey is the perfect location for an energy trading hub where supplier and consumer can interact. As you know, that Turkey has failed over years to use the advantage of the being a natural energy hub owing to its geographical location and to become a regional actor in energy. Therefore, the providing energy supply security and bringing new investors into the tur Turkish energy sector are among the priorities of the Turkey so as to achieve its economic goals. Turkey stands as a key country in ensuring energy supply security through diversification of supply sources and routes, considerations that have gained increased significance in today's Europe. In the recent years, Turkey starts to play important role in energy supply security by being part of the energy projects such as Southern Gas Corridor, TANAP, and Turkish Stream. Natural gas become a key energy source. Turkey sitting on the natural gas road from north, east, and south. Thus, Turkey does not wish to be regarded as a transit country like Ukraine. Turkey also as a natural gas consumer country aims to lower the cost originating from natural gas price when all gas project becomes operational. 
with Rea Realize and the other new projects, Turkey wants to become an energy hub state in the energy. However, firstly, uh, we should uh, indicate that there is a there is difference between energy transit state and energy hub state. This should be understood properly. The energy hub is a country that buys energy in its borders and then re-export them to the other uh, purchasers. And in doing so, it sets the selling condition, conditions independently from the original producers and final buyers. Another component of the energy hub is the bigger infrastructure that is constructed for the production of the petrochemicals for exports and get, get for the natural gas, gas storage uh, terminal for LNG and pipelines. On the other way, an energy transit state refers to a state where the energy pipelines are laid to connect an energy producing state with an, with an energy consuming state. On the other hand, Turkey, Turkey's relations with the Gulf states have uh, significantly improved under the uh, Justice and Development Part, AK Party, in the last 15 years. The arrival of the AK Party to power changed the negative Im image of the Turkey in the eyes of the important actors in the Gulf region. Under the AK Party, Ankara gave up the, tra the traditional policy of the being neglected toward the Arab Gulf, Gulf in the favor of the policy of the active engagement. This was a welcome development for major regional actors such as Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Why not for the other Gulf countries? According to the statistics, 30% of the world oil reserves and more than 20% of the world natural reserves are under the control of the six states comprising the Gulf uh, GCC, GCC countries, Bahrain, Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi, Ara Saudi Arabia, uh, Oman, and uh, Arab Emirates. The total primary energy production increased clearly in the GCC countries during the last uh, fifth uh, decades, and uh, Saudi Arabia is considered the second largest total petroleum and other liquid producer behind the United States. During the last 30 years, the total primary energy production was doubled in the GCC countries, and in some countries like Qatar, the production in 2015 is 10 times that of the 90s, 1980s. On the other hand, the increase in the population has obviously been reflected in the increase in the primary energy consumption in the GCC country. From the Turkish perspective, Gulf markets, capital, and energy resources offer great opportunity for its expanded, expanded economy. GCC states rely on abundant energy sources, wealth funds, sound banks, and as well as strong public finances. Although the energy sector remains and will be in the long term the main driver of the economy and the most important source of rev revenues in the Gulf country, which uh, poses about 30% of the world proven oil reserves and 20% of the global natural gas reserves. And that's why we say that the Turkey has advantage to develop major energy transit road connecting the GCC state with the European energy market. This leads to the bilateral uh, relationship between Qatar and Turkey, and we know that the EU needs natural gas from this region, and therefore Turkey is, plays a crucial or important role in the process of an energy bridge between Gulf countries and EU countries. Even though the political parameters evolve quickly, seriously threatening the prospect for the cooperation, Turkey could implement a strategy of the providing the GCC countries ideal partners 
in such a, such a project with the logis logistical assets required matching the Mediterranean and European Union markets. Turkey and Qatar cooperation is a case in point. Qatar longs to, to, to be the most promising partner for the Turkey energy project, especially with the LNG. And Turkey imports 1.7 BCM of it is LNG from Qatar. Qatar is the most, export, most exporting country of the LNG in the world. And also Turkey wants to increase the number of the countries from which it imports LNG. For that reason, Turkey state-owned energy company, Botash, signed a preliminary agreement with the Qatar's national petroleum company to, per, to buy liquefied natural gas or LNG over the long time period. And that's why we are saying that Turkey is very dependent on foreign sources of the fossil energy, and it has to import uh, 98 of the natural gas and about 90% of the oil it consumes. Uh, furthermore, Turkish imports of the crude oil and natural gas mainly came from Saudi Arabia, Iran, Azerbaijan, and Russia. Coming in addition to an uh, unstable regional environment, dependence on the restricted number of the suppliers implies a long-lasting long tendency for price to rise and further push Turkey towards the diversifying its supplies. Turkey is near silk road energy. In addition to being a natural energy corridor and trans-state, Turkey has a great ambition to become a trading, uh, a trading energy hub. Turkey geographical situation as an important factor uh, between the Europe, Central Asia, and Gulf and Middle East. And that's why we say that this, this, this role is used as a, an argument to impose the country as a secure energy hub for trans transit and re-export of the energy commodities. To make it is possible, Turkey has tried to complete its liberalization process in gas market, try to expand gas storage and pipeline network. Additionally, Turkey is always ready to foster and participate in, in new opportunities with regard to wealth and wellness of the region, and thus, thus GCC countries or Gulf countries are important for cooperation in this region. We expect all Gulf countries or GCC countries are part of the, the new silk road of the energy. Thank you. Thank you very much, <coughs> Dr. Talagul. As we saw just now, Qatar may remain the main strategic partner, especially in the LNG side of the energy supply resources and Turkey as it seems will be an important transit country which can enable the GCC countries to reach the European markets. We have 15 minutes left of this session and please uh, have your questions ready, be pointed in your questions and avoid long comments. In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate, my question is to Dr. Khalid. He spoke about a partnership between Qatar and Turkey of 20 billion dollars. We know that after the failed coup attempt in Turkey, don't you think that Qatari investments in a country like Turkey after this failed coup is some sort of a misadventure, a risk? Please state your name. 
Yusuf and Hamad Al-Rahman. This session uh, talked about many positive uh, aspects which can establish uh, establish uh, uh, good uh, things instead of uh, talking about existential threats, Iranian role, and other things. What we talked about, about technology transfer, knowledge transfer, investment, will this Qatari catalyst, is it uh, directed by the government, or can, can the private sector benefit from the spillover and these uh, experts like natural gas and others, these are government sector issues. We in the Gulf are more concerned with the the private sector too. I want Khaled's opinion on this. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Tariq Al-Shari from Qatar. I want to speak to you in the language of the Arabic language of Suleyman Al-Atiqi. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. معكم طارق الشريف من قطر. I'd like to impose my question in English to Mr. Suleiman Al Atiqi. You've discussed about the diversification of investments and relations between Qatar and the GCC. Sorry, Turkey and GCC. And you've mentioned about the importance of how the diversification reduces the risks. Having said that. Um, Turkey as a destination for investments, there seems to be a lack of alignment with the um, local media and how the Turkish media represents the nation outside in terms of welcoming investors and welcoming, let's say, tourists and how they want to undergo their, their global strategy in terms of investments or um, tourism, like health sector or energy and whatsoever. So to what extent do you think the Turkish media should be reformed to be a more of a prominent um, dialect, but let's just say, or a, a, a prominent position to, to welcome more investors and to welcome more, um, at least on an individual matter, on people feeling more comfortable and more informed to come to Turkey and to invest? Thank you. Now the current war going on in the area and the Russian intervention inside Syria is, is this part of cutting off the path of Qatari gas which can go through Turkey to reach Europe because in the next century Europe will double its consumption of natural gas and maybe will try to uh, negotiate with Turkish companies to get the Azerbaijani gas uh, through Turkey into Europe, therefore cutting off the Russian supply line. So the Russians made a strategic move to sign the agreement of Turkstream gas. Turkish Russian plan, which was signed on the 10th of October with Alexander Novak and uh, uh, Birat Al Bayrak, the Turkish minister, and the Turkish parliament. My question is to uh, Mr. Suleiman Latiqi. Um, you pointed out that um, uh, 1973 was a starting point of working together between um, uh, Turkey and, and the GCC countries. Uh, my question is, uh, do you think this was built on uh, Islamic flirtation between uh, Turkey and the Gulf countries? Do you think it was covered with that? Because you've mentioned a number of uh, events that took place and they were all um, covered with religion or Islamic in, in essence. Do you think that religion played a role? Thank you. Uh, 
حسن جوهر من الكويت ايضا حسن جوهر من الكويت following the previous session and this session I want to propose here uh, a problem that I hope uh, the panelists can explain to me and that is the contradiction between political behavior and economic interests this morning we heard about uh, the negative uh, relations between Turkey, Iran and Russia vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, new relations between the JCC countries, but we do not see on the economic side anything that supports that if we take into account some of the indicators. The Saudi Arabia is the biggest partner in economic trade with Turkey, but it could not go beyond $6 billion last year. Whereas uh, the rest of the GCC countries, uh, the Emirates included, is around $8 billion. In other words, the total uh, exchange between all GCC countries and the Turkey is not more than $20 billion. This is in comparison $30 billion between Iran and uh, Turkey and $31 billion between Russia and Turkey. So, so far as Iran, Turkey, and Russia are concerned, they have mutual agreements to even raise the level to the level of $100 billion for both countries. So we're talking about a target of $200 billion Dollars, which Turkey is trying to improve its relations with Iran and Russia on the one hand. But we do not find the same with the Gulf GCC countries. This is something I cannot understand. Does the economy follow, follow politics or is it the other way around? Because the economic factors and indicators do not reflect on the level of political relations. Thank you very much. We have enough questions now, and for those who want to ask more. Dr. Khaled. For the question about uh, investment and capital is a coward and should run after the coup. I see, yes, it is true if the Qatari investments are all in the uh, Turkish stock market, they could have left, but the investments are in fixed uh, assets, in real estate, big projects, and the building of a terminal for Qatari gas in Turkey, and also uh, the investments before and after the coup. Before the coup attempt, Qatar was not number one in foreign investment uh, in Turkey, even, uh, even after the coup. There's a very big uh, number in, or figure in Qatar investments in Turkey. So the situation of Turkey and uh, and a strategic position uh, in the, the between the East and the West, uh, it uh, always been the road to uh, commerce between the West and the East. Uh, so Turkey, maybe the coup, the failed the, the coup was a surprise for, but uh, uh, Turkey's uh, return to stability will bring up uh, this topic again because uh, Turkey can uh, always be a remain stable. Uh, and I think the other countries will uh, pay attention to the fact that uh, Turkey will make a lot of investments in stability. As for the private sector, it is true that we as GCC countries, all our activities uh, are made or driven by the government, uh, mainly. That's why the relationship between Turkey and Qatar uh, is very much dominated by the government of uh, Qatar uh, in the form of Qatar's uh, investment uh, authority and, uh, uh, and 
There are a lot of action also by the Catholic private sector. We saw this lately. But I think that we as Catholic private sector, uh, we think that's important to focus on Turkey. But as I said uh, in my intervention, uh, we, we wish that the Turks help us in the diversifying Qatari economy and so supporting the Qatari private sector by some feasible projects uh, so that we can benefit from the Qatari, the Turkish uh, experience or uh, expertise in diversification. Uh, this is what we want to focus on, in fact. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Farid. In order to attract uh, more FTI uh, from Qatar, I think uh, government uh, has been uh, making important reforms uh, that reduce bureaucratic regulations. I think this is, first of all, is important. Uh, second, I think government agencies, especially investment agencies, uh, should give more information about potential invest investment areas in which uh, that uh, Qatari investors will be interested in. Uh, because not each sector uh, will be interested for uh, Qatari investments. I think our investment agencies uh, should determine the strategic sectors that Qatari investors will be interested in. So this is the uh, second crucial uh, steps. And lastly, uh, I think Turkey uh, should ease uh, the obstacles uh, that make it harder to get banking uh, license. Uh, this is especially important for uh, Islamic finance. Uh, if the government uh, and uh, other, age, other institutions, other economic institutions, ease uh, these obstacles uh, that limit to get uh, a banking license, I think uh, a co uh, cooperation related to Islamic finance uh, will increase. There will be more Qatari banks uh, that make investments uh, in Turkey. I think this is the uh, third crucial step. And for the question uh, which is related to Qatari investments after the coup attempt, uh, none of the Western companies uh, exit uh, from Turkey after the uh, coup attempt uh, because uh, there is no reason to do that. Uh, Turkey uh, is an important uh, investment hub, uh, so investors always uh, earn money from their investments in Turkey, and economic institutions uh, operate uh, uh, with uh, their full capacity after the coup attempt. So there is no uh, need to think an exit uh, from Turkey so I think uh, this is not a good strategy uh, for, for Qatari investors. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Artiki, and please try to be short. Okay. Addressing the first question on tourism, uh, this is a, a very interesting uh, sector. Um, it is uh, one of the, growing, uh, the fastest growing sectors in Turkey Gulf relations, however, Given the small percentage of Gulf citizens, um, they, they only constitute about 5% uh, of uh, Turkey's um, income when, from this particular sector. But we still see uh, a lot of uh, sh uh, shifts in uh, marketing strategies uh, within Turkey. If today you can go to any bazaar and you'll be speaking in, in Arabic only. Uh, but also in uh, the health sector as well, you can, uh, a lot of these uh, websites, if you survey them, they all have Arabic language, they all have representative who will speak in Arabic, and they're learning this very quickly. And also, um, if you look at, um, T Turkey has made, uh, understands its soft power and the Turkish soap operas, etc., and they've even used some of these figures in their advertising campaigns. And there's a large advertising campaign every year uh, targeting GCC countries. So I think uh, 
the Turks are making a lot of strides in targeting uh, Gulf countries, but also Arabs more generally. Uh, the Arabic language is uh, extremely important. Uh, is, uh, a lot of Turks are learning Arabic, and they understand it uh, to be very important for their potential of getting jobs. So I think there is an important shift uh, in this sector. Uh, as for the question on 1973, um, what, what I... Uh, I'm not sure if religion itself was uh, a factor, but the old paradigm of um, Arabic politics, uh, issues like the Palestinian uh, cause, the Algerian cause, they were, you know, they had a pan-Arabic dimension, but also pan-Islamic. Turkey uh, at the time was, I'm not going to say that Turkey shifted somehow and became more Islamic at that time, but they were making compromises, for instance, uh, they, they used to say that we can't join the Organization of Islamic Conference, we can't ratify this because it's contravened our secular uh, constitution. But then all of a sudden, when they were in, in need, in times of crisis, they make these compromises. They made them uh, because they understood that they were uh, important, they were uh, to the Arabs, they understood in Arab politics. And it's important to note that there's an Arab League consensus at the time. And this Arab League consensus was very anti-Turk at the time. So Tur the Turks had to uh, make these compromises usually uh, almost exclusively during times of crises. So they weren't strategic relations uh, by any stretch of the imagination. They were very much tactical when uh, they needed it, uh, especially in the 70s and the earlier times. It was only toward the 80s when there were more sustained uh, economic cooperation when um, they started moving uh, more uh, um, to, 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 uh, I wouldn't say Islamic, but uh, also uh, this only we only start to see this in 2000 and 2002. But I, I don't think that religion was a very important factor, uh, even even today. Thank you, and Dr. Karagul. Yes, uh, the Turkey and uh, Russia have agreement on the the Turkish stream, and the Turkish stream in this stage uh, only. Uh, transferring gas from Russia to Turkey, not to European country. Uh, on the other hand, we know, we, we say that, we know that, uh, that Turkey is a growing country. Turkey uh, needs the dependency uh, of energy, uh, only uh, one, one country, or we have to have uh, diversify all resources, and that's why we need uh, different countries, even uh, not only g gas from the pipeline, we need to use the gas from, let's say, Qatar by LNG. Uh, that's why uh, if we say that Turkey is going to be energy hub, and uh, this means that we uh, motivate all uh, sources country to uh, transfer their gas or sources from uh, their uh, country to the uh, Turkey, and Turkey is going to be energy hub if we say that this uh, project uh, are realized. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I thank all of you for your patience and attentive listening. I thank Dr. Khalid Gour, Dr. Khalid, for the uh, presentation now. I invite you to dinner too much. Thank you.